Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another fantastic arcade game video for you this evening. We've got a really rare one tonight. We've been working on a lot of stuff, so I'm, I've got a pinball machine here right in my way, but we just finished this one up today. This is Bally Midway's famous, but hard to find, Satan's Hollow. Really cool game. If you've never heard of this, and you're a religious person, you fight Satan in the game. So you're not, you know, you're not Satan. You're fighting Satan. And Beelzebub and Lucifer, they're all in it. What an interesting game. So this was put out in 1982. And apparently Midway uh, decided to push the envelope a little bit with it. And it's a really cool game, really fun awesome cabinet now when we got this in it was pretty rough so this is going to be a fairly expensive one um, but I figured I would mention kind of what we did to it just so people would know what goes into some of these games this is one of Bally's MCR 2 games which are a little more complicated than some of the other ones they have a like a uh, inside of them there's a lot of electronics so there's a monitor of course there's a sound amplifier there's a suitcase they call it power supply there's a linear power supply there's a soundboard and there's a CPU board and a ROM board so there's a whole bunch of stuff going on inside of it and you have to kind of mess with all of that so when we got that one not only did all that stuff need serviced but the cabinet was in pretty rough shape the the cool super cool artwork was still on the side and the fr the front top half looked about how you see it now but the bottom of the machine was was basically missing it was there but it was separated from the machine so when we got this game the entire bottom of the machine was dragging under it <laughs> just from where it this is it's a plywood cabinet um see that proves it's plywood right <laughs> It's a plywood cabinet, but uh, that bottom piece had gotten wet and had been damaged and just was falling off. I don't mean the, the parts you can see, I mean the flat part, part that it's sitting on. Um, so that, that board was damaged and was basically hanging onto the game by the wiring that holds, you know, that, that connects all the boards together. Um, so we had a lot of cabinet work that we did on it, so we replaced that board um, with a new sheet of plywood that's, you know, the right size and everything. Um, and then the the bottom of the cabinet on the edges was a little rough where it was attached to that board um, so we put a lot of wood filler and bondo and got that nice and smooth sanded it down and then fortunately we were able to match the color nearly perfectly I don't know if you can tell the can I can see it a little bit standing here looking at it I can barely tell what was painted and what wasn't but you might not be able to tell on the camera. I'll zoom in a little bit so maybe you can see it a little better. If you look very closely, I don't even know if that's going to show up, but uh, see if I can get my finger into the screen. This part is new red, this part is old red. So we were able to match the color nearly perfectly, almost perfectly. See it? You can see it a little bit, right? So because we were able to match it so closely, we were able to repaint the bottom. Of the, we got the bottom, the bottom uh, looking good. We were able to repaint it, and we just painted around the art and left him doing his thing. That's Satan himself you're looking at. Um, and uh, man, it came out fantastic. We think it, it really looks pretty good, considering. Now the sheen, the color is slightly off, just barely, you can barely tell, and the sheen is barely off. I don't know if you can, yeah, there we go. See the reflection right here, that white line, or my finger actually. So the sheen is just slightly different. So this is the original paint, which is almost like a semi-gloss, but not quite, or maybe, maybe it is, but, and this is satin, um, which is really close. So you can tell here in looking at it in person that it's been repainted, but to a lot of people they'd probably look at it and, and not notice it at first. So it came out pretty good. Here's the other side. 
similar thing going on but all in all looks great check out that art though I mean that is just cool and it's painted on the cabinet so it's not a it's not a sticker or anything doesn't he look devilish and he's got his warrior suit on basically this came out in 1982 and then check out the marquee Satan's Hollow. All right, so after we got it, we got a, all the uh, cosmetic stuff done. We repainted the front. There are some bolts down here that we painted the same color. You can paint those black, or you can put chrome ones in that are really nice. But we kind of like it looking a little more simple. Um, after we got all of the cosmetics looking good, well, then we had to fix it. So we rebuilt the monitor. And uh, the uh, power supply in the bottom of it has the, is a suitcase power supply, they call it, for these MCR games. And it has these big capacitors in it, these huge capacitors. I mean, they're like, they look like Coke cans, basically. And uh, one of them is uh, 56,000 UF, and one of them is 100,000 UF. Or I think it's 50, I think it's 55,000 UF and 100,000 UF. And that, that there are filter capacitors that kind of filter the signal going to the monitor. There's also like a little, uh, they call it a uh, motor start capacitor. It's like a little oil, it's a little can filled with oil. <laughs> Very strange. We replaced that too. And uh, if you don't, if you get one of these MCR games and you don't do that, you'll get a couple issues. If you look really close, the top shaking it's supposed to do that if you look really close you'll see a, a line go through the, the machine you probably can't tell it that good on this picture because you're on this uh, camera because you're probably getting probably looks even worse on the camera but here and here in person you can barely see a line going through the image whenever it gets to this main screen yes yeah, I can see it just a little bit going from side to side about that fast so anyway all that you just saw probably isn't here in person, but there is one little little bit of a line. They call that a hum bar, and uh, it's just if your uh, if your power signal to you the game board and the power signal to the uh, monitor aren't perfect, you'll get that. So all of these MCR games always have that, but you can limit that by replacing those capacitors in the power supply. And the the they're they're kind of expensive because they're huge. I mean they're they're literally the size of a Coke can. Um, but so we've got it pretty good, but that's about as good as it gets on an MCR game. But, uh, if you, whenever we first got it, before we replaced those, there was a really bad, I mean, like a black line going across the screen. So, uh, it'll also cause problems with the sound. So if you've got like a big hum or something, and I don't mean like a minor one, I mean, it'll be going the whole time the thing's turned on. That's because those filter capacitors need replaced. So after we did that, uh, we rebuilt the linear power supply. So it it has uh, it basically takes the the voltages from that uh, suitcase power supply and turns them into five volts and twelve volts, and it provides a reset line to the game board and uh, some some various things. It's got a battery on it to save the high score things like that. So uh, we rebuilt that power supply, and after we did that, uh, we rebuilt the sound amp. And after we did that, we worked on the game board. Now the game board had a couple of RAM errors that we replaced. Um, and it had, uh, there's three boards connected together that are the, the main power, the main board is the CPU board, the ROM board, and the, the in-out sound board, they call it, super sound in-out board. And uh, all of those are connected by these little ribbon cables. So we bought new ribbon cables to connect them so that they made a, you know, a good, uh, so the, the signals could get through right. And we got the board up and running and doing its thing. So that's the kind of stuff that goes into getting like a real old game going. And so a game like this that's uh, pretty popular, kind of rare, um, is certainly worth all that effort. So um, we were able to get her back up and running and doing her thing. And it also has this really cool 
black light, similar to Tron. Tron was another Bally Midway MCR2 game. Um, so it's the same kind of architecture, but uh, it just so happened since they were made around the same time, they used the same architecture, and then also uh, they came up with the idea to put this black light thing in both cabinets. And then also the, the uh, joystick, of course, is just like Tron, except it's red and the Tron one's blue. So we didn't replace the control panel overlay. It has a little bit of wear, but it's not horrible. So whenever they're uh, decent, we usually leave them. Some people would prefer that be perfect. So some people will be offended by that. <laughs> but we didn't think it was that bad, so we left it. This thing here where it cracks on the edge, whenever you put a new one on, they almost always do that anyway. So it's hard to it's hard to get take care of that. So. Um, a new one would probably look a little better, the black would be a little blacker, and a new one wouldn't have cigarette burns on it. So, But we thought it looked pretty good, so we left it. Now they also put uh, artwork around the bezel, as you can see. And uh, it has a tinted plexi screen over the tube. This is a Wells Gardner 4900 monitor, a really good monitor that uh, was in all, all kinds of stuff back in the day. So, what is this game about? So in the game, you are a little rocket at the bottom of the screen. It's a, it's a shooting game similar to something like Galaga, basically. It's like a, it's like a Galaga with different artwork, <laughs> essentially. And back in the day, they had tons of games like that. So they had uh, Stratavox, it's a lot like Stratavox in my opinion. So they had Stratavox and Galaga and Space Firebird and Galaxian and you know just tons of shooting games. So basically you're a little ship down at the bottom of the screen and at the top of the screen are these little gargoyles flying around and in the background they've got this big castle looking thing you know and uh, basically you are fighting the Satan of the Hollow Satan himself, right? And so you fight off these you fight off these uh, gargoyles, and you uh, down on the bottom left hand of the screen there is a little piece of a bridge that comes up every time you, you kill one of these gargoyles. So you gr you can grab that piece of the bridge by just going over the top of it. You automatically link onto it, and then you haul it across the screen over to the right side, and you put it over the fire, the the hollow like he's doing right now. And uh, eventually you build a bridge all the way across the hollow. Well, when you do, you go into, uh, they call it, what do they call it, Satan, Satan's land or something like that, I don't know. You go over and uh, actually fight Satan himself. Now that's not Satan there, that's Lucifer. There's a difference, I'll show you that here in a minute. <laughs> or I think that was Lucifer. Um, and you actually fight Satan himself. And then if you beat him, it starts over again and it's harder and 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 harder as these old games were. It just keeps repeating over and over and over again and getting unbelievably hard. Now I'm going to show you something really interesting. Um, or actually I think I'll just show you that on the whenever I set up the tripod because I'll be able to show the screen a little bit better. But there's a, a really cool hardware thing I want to show you that uh, um, you can compare to MAME. And, It'll show you something cool. So what I'll do is I'll turn the lights out real quick and I'll show you how that lights up. Um, just so you see how cool it is in a dark room. Um, and then we'll set up the tripod and we'll play through it a little bit. Okay, I'm not sure how well this will show up on the camera. But that's a black light so it gives you this real kind of eerie glow on the control panel. Which fits the theme of the game really well. Alright. They also use this joystick, this type of joystick, in a uh, in Gorf, but in Gorf it lit up. There was like a little light back here, and as you pulled the trigger, the uh, the light would go off, and then when you let go of the trigger, the light comes back on. Very cool. But uh, as you can see, it's a very attractive looking game. It just looks cool. Very interesting cabinet. So I'll set up the tripod. We'll play through it a little bit and you can see what you All right, folks. I'm going to talk to you a second about MAME. I'm going to mention MAME for a minute here. Like I said, this is an MCR game and it had a uh, 
like I described earlier, it had a lot of little game boards that made everything work. Are you crooked? Would you like me to like me to fix you a little bit? Whoa. <laughs> Let's go back up. We'll see. I think that's a little more straight. It's an MCR game board, right? And so it's just a certain type of hardware that they use to, to run the, the software, right? Well, because of the way it was made, there's, and you know, back then there was no MAME. There was no other way to play that software ex unless you had this arcade game with the MCR board set in it. So it has a few little idiosyncrasies. So one of the things that uh, is an issue is that you see this, uh, I don't, you can't see it on this game, but you'll see it on a lot of MCR games. So the MCR games were like Tron, Discs of Tron, Satan's Hollow, Spy Hunter, um, Kick, um, and maybe a couple, one or two more. So when you play an MCR game, usually down here on the bottom right, there's trash on the screen. So there's like little, over here, right on the right, there'll be like little lines and just weird looking stuff, little blue lines and stuff. Well, all of that I have adjusted slightly off the screen. So it's just right off the screen where you barely can't see it. But on most of the time, whenever you buy one of these games, you'll see that there'll be like some little lines. On Tron, you can't really adjust it off the screen all the way. If you if you try, you lose a little bit of the the square image, so it's a little harder to do it on Tron. Um, so you'll notice that on a, on a, all the MCR games because that's just an artifact of how the the game ran, right? So I th I think the explanation is, and I'm not an expert at this, so somebody can call me out if they know better, but. I think the game actually does some of its math to make the the game work um, in a certain part of the RAM that makes an actual image on the screen. Uh, Williams games do the same thing. Like on Defender, if you adjust the, the monitor wrong, all the way on the right-hand side of the screen, there'll be a bunch of trash on the screen, just weird stuff, and uh, just lines and different colored lines and stuff. And the explanation I heard was that it's because the game is, is using that piece of RAM to do some math and so since it's doing some computations in that it actually throws a little bit of trash on the screen so anyway i think that's what's going on so all the mcr games have that another thing you'll notice is that when it's when it switches screens you, you, you might have not caught it but if you go back frame by frame you might see it but when it switches screens you see trash on the screen so you see like just static just for a second you know if you watch it on, like right there was an excellent example. There was a bunch of it. If you watch it on MAME, you won't see any of that. And the reason that you won't see it is because that's an artifact of the hardware that's running the game. So because of the way the boards are set up and the way the, uh, the power gets to the boards and the way the RAM chips uh, work and all that, blah, 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 it gives you some trash on the screen. So any MCR game will have that. There's a bunch of it on uh, Tron. There's a bunch of it on Spy Hunter especially when the screens change. And then the last thing I want to point out to you that's fascinating to me is on the title screen. It's going to go back around to it. If you if you play this game on main, when it writes Satan's Hollow, all of that wiggles a little bit, but they made it do that on purpose. So the Satan's Hollow wiggles a little bit. But watch what happens to the H when it draws the H in. So Satan's... Watch when they draw the H. Boop, did you see it? You see this little dot right here? Isn't that weird? So if you watch it on MAME, it doesn't do that. So it's only on the actual game that it does that it makes that little mistake. And it's not like a ROM thing where they fixed it or anything. I don't believe. I may be wrong about that, but I don't believe. It's just an artifact of the MCR board set. So that's the difference between emulation and having the actual hardware. Now, that's a useless difference. Who, who gives a damn if, it, if in MAME it writes that perfectly? And in the actual game, it puts that dot in the wrong spot. Who cares, right? Nobody cares, really, but it's just it's something interesting, right? So MAME, MAME plays the software perfectly, but this arcade game wasn't capable of playing the software purpose, per, uh, perfectly back in the day. When we first saw that little dot, we thought, oh, man, it's like, it's like a little RAM problem or something. But if you look, every original Satan's Hollow does that same damn thing. It's just that it has something to do with the way the board set worked. So uh, I, I thought that's kind of cool how they j how they wiggle too. It's like just moving a little bit. But anyway, on one of these screens here, I want to show you it names everybody. So it says bridge bomber. Bridge bomber drops rocks. If the rock hits the bridge, that section of the bridge will be destroyed. 
which is horrible, folks. But it's going to name all of the characters in the game here in a minute. That is not Satan. That's like Lucifer, I think. Oh, oh. I want to see that bonus a bonus flag is added each time a battle has been successfully completed each bonus flag is worth a thousand additional points to collect the bonus build the bridge into the land of Satan and defeat Satan each time Satan is defeated an additional barrel is added to the base up to a maximum of three barrels right so they're calling it the land of Satan but I wanted to sh I want to show you the difference between the different uh, devils. It has a screen here where it uh, describes them all for you and tells you the point values they're in. Here we go. Satan is the one with the pitchfork. Lucifer is the smaller one. Old Nick's the medium sized one, and Beelzebub is the big one. And then we've got egg throwers and bridge bombers, and there was one more, I think, gargoyle or something like that. All right, so we're going to play it a little bit. Enough talking. One credit per player. For directions, hit the shield button. To start game, press one player or, pre or push two players. Let's hit the shield button, right? Building the bridge. Obtain bridge pieces by shooting the enemy. Get bridge piece from the left side and deposit the piece on the right. You see the little static and stuff popping up? Whenever something changes. So that's how you build the bridge. All right. Here we go. These MCR games all had pretty good sound. It had uh, stereo sound with six channels. They called it, but it was, you know, of course, just the same two speakers. I guess I should have been doing that, right? Not, since that is the object of the game. <laughs> Duh. Duh. There's my flag. That's for my bonus people. So who's that one? That's uh, that's Lucifer, right? Oh. All hell has broke loose, people. Look how he's trying to steal my damn. Oh, here he comes. Oh, I got him. That was quick. But only for the first time. Damn. Oh, that's Beelzebub, isn't it? He's dead, I know that much. Give me back my belly fruit. Ooh! In your face, Lucifer! I'm kind of shooting too many of them because uh, I'm not, I'm not, I need to go get the bridge piece, you know? Shield people. <laughs> he got my man. I tried to stop him. I was I was unable to. Whew.
All right, my score ranking is one. We're going to play through it one more time. All right, what do you think about that? See the trash on the right side of the screen? Kind of jumping around a little bit. Whoop, I guess that I must have been hitting space or something. What the hell? Oh, I've got the screen adjusted so far you can barely read the bottom. All right, let's play it again. What do you think? Maybe I'll be better this time. I don't know if it's better to just try to grab each piece or to just keep shooting. I guess I should be doing whatever gives you a bigger score. Ooh, in your face! And oh. Damn Lucifer again. <laughs> oh, it's the same one. He changed. I didn't notice that. Are they suggesting it's the same that they're all Satan? Damn it. Are they suggesting that they're all Satan, but they just uh, they changed names after they've been there a little while? Like he's Lucifer and he's old he's old Nick, and then he's uh Behel's above, but it's the same. See, look, now he's Lucifer, he's smaller. See, now he's, now he's old Nick. Or maybe it's the same one and he's just changing his, uh, his expression. See, now he's Beelzebub. Damn it. He took it to me, people. He took it to me. Game is over again. We're going to play one last game to see if I get any better. Hey, we can all hope. You see all the static I'm talking about? destruction. It was like I was fighting Russia. Woo! I barely, I barely got on that button, people. I don't know. I think I gotta kill a bunch of these damn things. There's too many of them. And you know, I don't think you have to catch your guy. I think he just automatically comes back. I got lucky. Damn it. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. It's hard out there in the hollow. Damn it. <laughs> All right, well, there you go, folks. Satan's Hollow. What a cool game. Wish I was better at it. I think I'll practice. Now by the time you see Satan's Hollow, he may have slunk off to someone else's game game room. We may not have him for sale anymore. But you can see all of the games that we do have for sale on our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. It's always up to date. 
Or if you're local, come by and see us. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina, and we've got a building here with dozens at all times. So we've got right now we've got about 40 arcade games for sale. Now, if you're not local so you can't come by and you're not going to check out our website because you don't want to buy, that's fine. Just subscribe to us here on YouTube and uh, make sure and give us a thumbs up on the video. That really helps us out because it uh, tells everybody else on YouTube, hey, here's a cool video. And that's what we're going for, right? And uh, leave your comments below if you ever played this back in the day, if you have any funny stories about it. Uh, I saw uh, one time where someone had modified the marquee because the location it was in just couldn't abide. <laughs> they would not have it. So I can't remember what they had done. But I think they took off the S and the A or something. Tans hollow. Um... So if you got any funny stories about it back in the day, I'd love to hear that. And if you remember playing it anywhere, uh, tell us where you used to play it 35 years ago, whenever it came out, uh, down below, and we'll all respond in the comments. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good evening, and we'll see you on the next one.